I mentioned, uh, and we said together, the words of Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, there was a time, I mean, we still have an international association for religious freedom, which includes uh, the uh, uh, free uh, religious uh, part of the spectrum of uh, Indian Hinduism. Uh, but there was a time when we were in very active association, and uh, Tagore spent a lot of time in this country, I guess you'd say, hanging out with American Unitarians. And we, in turn, uh, visited there, and there were conferences, very active conferences, back and forth. Um, Tagore uh, is in the hymnal, and he's also in a variety of texts that are part of our of our own American Unitarian Universalist tradition now. And I want to just read these words again as our text for the morning uh, that we said together. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. It is the same life that is rocked in the ocean cradle of birth and death, in ebb and in flow. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life, and my pride is from the life throb of ages dancing in my blood this moment. I usually talk on Flower Communion Sunday uh, about uh, Norbert Chopek. As most of you know, he was the um, Unitarian minister, Unitarian uh, convert, who founded the Unitarian Church in Czechoslovakia, uh, not only the church in Prague, but as it turned out, the network of our churches there in that country, which most of us are unaware even exists, I think. Um, for some time, as the uh, world built toward World War II, uh, and hostility grew, Chopek felt the need for some kind of a new symbolic ritual that would bind people together, and he turned uh, to the celebration of spring flowers for a simple service of sharing that would celebrate human fellowship and the caring community. There's a lot to his story, which I will not tell again this morning, but would probably tell again next year. Uh, among other things, the most significant thing is that he was martyred uh, just at the outset of World War II, uh, killed by the Nazis for his liberal views and his resistance to uh, fascism. His widow brought the service to the United States to our church in Cambridge, Mass, in 1940. While Chopek's main point in this flower communion service was the unity of human souls in the spirit of free religion, I'm wanting this morning to explore additional meaning in the flower communion, which I feel sure uh, Chopek would, would endorse. Let me wander off somewhat systematically in that, uh, in that direction. It begins for me in the joy of flowers themselves. You don't have to be a gardener, as some of you are, I know, to, to see it. A gardener like my oldest daughter up on Washington Island who, who loves to work the ground around her flowers with her hands and the heel of her hand and, and prefers that to tools just so that she can uh, enjoy what she refers to as the sheer delight of, of feeling these flowers unfold within her hands. She takes for granted that everyone delights in this just as she does. Not that they're all working the ground, but that they all have the same response to flowers. I think probably she's right, although I think she has a more existential 
uh, experience of them uh, growing them the way she does. And you don't have to be an enthusiastic nature lover. I, I've been impressed with our city lately in this regard. Chicago, herbs in Horto, the city in a garden. Nowadays, actually taking its motto seriously, well-tended flower gardens in our parks and greenswards. I don't understand where the money is coming for this, given the situation. But, you know, street medians uh, abounding uh, in blooms and the planters installed recently in the loop uh, on my street, in front of my apartment on Wabash Avenue, you know, which for generations just a drab utilitarian street under the L and is now filled with flowers. Uh, in, in flourishing in that most unlikely setting. So there's clearly another dimension of communion here that flowers symbolize. The communion we have with the earth itself, with the source of all. And further, the gardener discovers um, a special magic about that communion with the earth, that the earth cooperates uh, with our efforts. The earth responds, the earth reciprocates, the earth seems disposed to engage its creative energy with our own. And this is an amazing thing, as if the earth is reaching out and, and taking the gardener's hand and saying, yes, let's do this as a team. Let's create something new and fresh and beautiful together. Now, I'm aware that I've been repeating this basic theme a lot lately. Uh, going back to my sermon in December on loving the winter earth, and, and then a couple of weeks ago, uh, another Earth Day awakening. I guess I shouldn't uh, worry about this. Um, I think I've mentioned to you before that most ministers come to realize that they really have only one sermon, which, uh, which they tell in many different ways which reminds me of the young preacher just starting out in his first church who preached his first sermon, and it was well received. And the next Sunday, he preached exactly the same sermon. As the congregation, as you can imagine, was a, a little disconcerted. <laughs> Say, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> Finally, the next Sunday, he preached the same one. Again, exactly the same sermon. So finally, then one of the, the elders spoke to him and, and, and said, you know, you've preached the same sermon three weeks in a row. Were, were you planning to, to give us another one? And the young preacher said, well, well, yes, but you haven't done anything about this one yet. <laughs> he had a lot of adjusting to do as a it is a better student. Well, in any case, I'm aware that a recurring theme in my sermon has been to draw your attention to the generative, creative spirit pulsating and promising within nature itself, the life force that is constantly upswelling beneath us, and which we can, if we want to use the word, legitimately call God reveals a communion fundamental to our existence with the source of the sustenance that keeps us alive. Flowers, it seems to me, are a marvelous symbol of this essential communion with the very ground, literally the very ground of our being. Thinking about this reminded me of James Thurber's famous story, The Last Flower. Some of you, I'm sure, which he published in 1939, just about the time Chopek was put to death by the jack-booted fascists who were already wielding their, their hammer of hatred and genocide on such lovely people like the gentle Chopek himself, foremost, of course, the Jews who lost their lives in the millions but also myriad others, homosexuals, transgendered persons, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and on and on. Anyone the Nazis thought did not measure up to their Aryan standards 